Hi, I'm uh, Kieran Gillen. And this... I'm Jamie McCauley. It's actually my first time in Edinburgh, so uh, being at the Book Festival is just part of an enormous sort of experience of him being here. And it's like generally, I don't know, it's just basically atmosphere. The thing. Yeah, the atmosphere is and fantastic. It's like, it really sort of quite like even the yurt, the kind of the writers area, and they're all kind of this a very low level, lovely sense of communality, which I like a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Like the words all integrate together, and, and, and everybody's part of the same uh, community. I guess it's great. Uh, Strict is amazing. Um, one of the things I said about it was uh, it's there's so many different types of comics, and there's so many different things that people take from comics, and they're all here, and they're all mixed in together, and it's all treated with the same. Uh, respect and that's brilliant. Yeah, it's kind of a it's, it's a it's a wonderful taste for the comic form. You can look at this enormous selection of what people do, uh, and this some people are phenomenally successful, some people are very underground, and this is all co comics. And it's, a, it's a wonderful example of the strength of the medium today. The demographics of what we do is always quite interesting. I think. Um, I think we've always had quite a mixed demographic. I mean, a uh, phonogram mm. especially. Mm. Uh, would you agree, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So what we what we have is quite perhaps different from what normal perception of comics would be. But as you said, that's changed a lot recently, anyway. Um, and that's be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our audience for the panel was pretty mixed across all demographics. It was great, and for the signing as well, young, old. Um, it, it, it's great, and that's yeah. what comics should be. I think. It's really like, it's like uh, we often write about, talk about comics as bands, and you know the our audience seems very much like a band audience. I can, if I was at a gig, I could imagine it being this. We both uh, got into comics at several stages in our lives, and, and went in and back out, and then back in again. Um, what, what got me into it as an adult uh, was Sandman, um, which I think is a fairly common one. Uh, I, think I, I got into that when I was at university. When I was about twenty. Um, I was reading it, and previously I thought that it was all stereotypical superhero stuff and I read that and thought oh comics can be like this too and I started drawing and uh, that got me into it really yeah. I mean I kind of came I mean I was dabbled a bit in my early 20s like one or two trades a year but I kind of really came in hard at 25 when I sort of discovered the books of Warren Ellis uh, and it was it was like this wonderful thing it's like Imagine like discovering music at 25, or you know, or discovering books even at 24. The idea that uh, like pop music has been happening for about 100 years, 110 years, and there's been music across the entire period, and there's shops full of this stuff. And that's comics, you know. I, I knew very little, and suddenly I, I had the, the great joy of having a, a fairly late in life discovery of something I knew nothing about, and there was a world to colonise. So that, there's a lot of that there, you know. And I, I generally speaking, I kind of like comics in terms of potential, in terms of there's lots of stuff that simply hasn't been done in comics. Um, uh, you know, for like a relatively young art form, um, I, don't even, I even like the cultural uphill battle. I kind of like being disreputable. Uh, my influences are pretty varied. Um, it isn't necessarily obvious in the work, but um, I, I guess from the beginning, uh, artists like Mark Kemple, who did who did the Kindly One section of Sandman, and then through to people like Philip Bond, uh, and Paul Smith, uh, and then more modern artists like. Christine Norrie and um, oh, so many. Uh, it's, it's in, there's so many incredible artists in comics um, that they all influence you in some way. I think even if it's not directly, you, you sort of look at how someone's done something and then think, how could I approach that? Um, so yeah, too numerous to mention. I mean, my primary my primary influences in comics are your kind of standard selection of Englishmen, sorry, British people with names being in G and E. <laughs> Um, and a lot of them are kind of like I think quite typical of uh, such men in my generation. Um, I mean, outside of comics, um, I watch my, my big teenage influence was the writer was Banks, which of course in passing this year was incredibly sad in that way. So you know he informed a lot of what I do in terms of social conscience. Then it's you know it's just standard selection of ballads and Burroughs and that general reading list. Um, and the pop music, a lot of journalism, a lot of criticism influenced me, you know, um, in your, your classic lineage from Lester Bangs downwards. I'm, I'm kind of, I draw quite heavily from that. We are both famous, you know, we're both enormously into music and it informs it both kind of indirectly in terms of we're trying to evoke a feeling and evoke the translation of comics to music doesn't really work one for one because, you know, by definition there's no sound in comics, therefore we've got to try something translatory and magically and therefore it, forces you to be uh, formally innovative to try to say, can we do a, a comic that feels like XYZ pop song? And, you know, we, we very explicitly sort of chase that. Um, but there's, there is a connection between comics and music. It's like, um, it's like 
music moves without meaning. I think a selection of notes arranged in a sequence shouldn't really move you. And that's kind of the effect of actually stuff like drawing line in comics. The idea of actually how, not just what the picture is showing, but how the picture is shown. And that's kind of similar to the effect of music. And the juxtaposition of captions with that effect is a little about choosing your lyrics and adding it to music. And it's all about essentially the resonance between the two. So, um, yeah, that's basically how it works. I mean, that's kind of the ground level, for me anyway. You're an Avengers fan, Jamie McKelvey. It's amazing. Uh, it's our attempt at doing a superhero comic for the, this decade, really. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, how do I describe it? It's a kind of hailing of the new, in yeah, this kind of way, as yeah. we deliberately set these really harsh rules on ourselves that we wouldn't prestige anything in comics that had existed, because comics tend to be quite a retro sort of culture. Uh, it will do these quite experimental, formalist sort of set pieces for action, and we wouldn't repeat a single idea from them. So there's stuff like that that really just making it hard for ourselves in an attempt to try to carve a space. Mm. Um, and at the same time, this is still a pop song. This is still in the tradition of a, a 60s Marvel comic about superheroes as metaphor for teenage uh, problems and adventures and all these kind of things. So we're something that is both in the tradition, but it's divorced from it as much as we can make it. You know, we want to make it tw- something that feels as 2013 as, I don't know, a get lucky or whatever. You know, it's something that immediately connects to that moment in time and space. We've got plans for 2014. This is probably the best we way of putting it. We have got plans for 2014. Some of that will be phonogram free, which is the Immaterial Girl, which is uh, the third part of our phonogram, which is kind of our, our indie hit uh, back in the day, which we're really happy to be returning to. Mm-hmm. And we have other plans.